In this demo, I'm going to be discussing the computer architecture assignments, assignments one, two, and three. Okay, so where do I get my assignments again? I go into my Google Chrome. I go to the Rosebank College website. I click on current students. That takes me to the student intranet. And from the student intranet, I can then see that I've got student material. I can click on the student material. And then I can go to my module, which is computer architecture, and I should have all of my uh, module documents there. That's your assignments, etc. cetera. Yeah. So there's 2024. I've got a module outline document. I've got a summative assessment, assignments one, two. The summative assessment I'm going to call assignment three for just ease of reference. And I'll use assignment three and summative assessment um, interchangeably. So we're going to start now by watching a video on critical thinking. And when we are discussing the assignment, I want you to think critically. Use the strategies that you learn in this video to think critically about the assignments and your strategy on how to us to be successful in assignment completion. Some total of human knowledge is pretty much available at the click of a button. We've never had access to so much information, but not all of what's out there is quite what it seems. So here's a few strategies to navigate your way through and avoid falling out with people along the way. We all enjoy that sweet dopamine hit of feeling like we're right. In repeated experiments, psychologists have shown we're much more likely to accept something as evidence if it confirms what we already think we know, and much more likely to discount information if it contradicts our views. It's what's known as confirmation bias. It's one of the key cognitive biases that humans have, and it operates at an unconscious level, affecting our ability to process information. This is especially true for issues which are emotionally charged or where our views are deeply held, but it can come into play at any time. So don't rush to decide and be actively prepared to change your mind. So many of our discussions take place on social media platforms where algorithms reward our desire to see and hear our views confirmed. But in life, most situations are nuanced and complicated. Acknowledging that can enrich the way that we view the world. For example, what colour is the sky? Well, the obvious answer is blue, but at sunrise or sunset, it can be red. On a cold, misty morning, white or grey. At night, midnight blue or black. But imagine for a moment the blue of the sky on a sunny day. Is it really blue? The colour blue has a short wavelength, meaning it scatters more than other colours, making it more visible to the human eye. So the sky looks blue to us humans, even though there's a whole spectrum of colours out there. Even something that seems totally self-evident can be more nuanced than you think. One approach to, well, arguing, is to let go of the idea of being right, or at least seriously consider that you might actually be wrong. Putting yourself in the other person's shoes can lead to much more productive outcomes really try to understand where the other person is coming from. It's what's called intellectual empathy. It can be challenging, but that's the point. This can only work when both parties are engaging in good faith. Arguing just to waste somebody's time, known online as sea lioning, not only makes you that guy or girl people avoid at parties, but we are intellectually, socially and politically worse off for it. It's more important than ever to know where your information is coming from. That sciencey looking graph about the dangers of feral Dalmatian puppies might look very convincing until you dig a little deeper and find it was commissioned by fur coat coveting Disney villain Cruella de Vil. Be on the lookout for ulterior motives and vested interests. Becoming literate in the basics of scientific methodology, the use of data and the way it's presented are all weapons in your arsenal when it comes to critical thinking. Whether engaging in online debates or arguing with Uncle Frank, it's very easy to lose our call cool and resort to some less than sound tactics. One common tactic is what philosophers call 
the straw man fallacy. Instead of engaging with the actual belief, you engage with a caricature. For example, if I said, I prefer hamsters to gerbils, you might respond, oh, so you want to drown all gerbils? A viewpoint that's much easier to take down. Another fallacy is the ad hominem fallacy, where you discount an argument because of your opinion of the person making it. This can lead to ad hominem attacks, which is basically Latin for name calling. In that situation, it's fair to say that everybody loses. Engaging in critical thinking isn't as fun as picking up a pitchfork or feeling like you're fundamentally right, but in the long run, it leads to a more curious, educated and harmonious society, which ultimately is the biggest win of all. Now, looking at our assignments. Assignment one. Let's understand assignment one and what is required of us. We've already created the assignment one answer document in an earlier video, and we've formatted the assignment answer document by adding an assignment cover page, by adding the table of contents, and by uh, referencing correctly. In a previous video, we've created um, or we've um, captured two sources of information. That's your textbook and then a website or a YouTube video. Okay, so let's look at this assignment, assignment one, and understand the assignment. Instructions, no material may be copied from original sources, even if correctly referenced, unless it has a direct quote indicated with quotation marks. No more than 10% of the assignment may consist of direct quotes. Any assignment with a similarity index of 25% or more will be scrutinized for plagiarism. Please ensure to attach your original originality report to the assignment if required. Make a copy of your assignment before handing it in. Assignments must be typed unless un otherwise specified. Remember also that there's no funny fonts and font sizes and font colors that's allowed. You use black fonts. The standard fonts is Arial or Calibri or Times Roman numeral with a font size of 11 or 12, right? So do not increase or decrease the font size or make your assignments very fancy when you are submitting it. It needs to be very standard. If you want a personal copy that you make fancy for your own reference, you're welcome to do that. But when submitting it, submitting it in a standard format. All work must be adequately and correctly referenced. We've shown you how to do this in an earlier video. Begin each new section on a new page. Follow all instructions on the assignment cover sheet. And this is an individual assignment. Although you may work and you are encouraged to work in groups and to give group feedback to each other, right? When you submit your assignment, it's your own original work. In other words, if there's five, six, seven, eight people in my group and we've all worked together and we've discussed it, we cannot hand in exactly the same work. Each of us needs to hand in work in our own voice, in our own words, okay? So there's a referencing rubric. You can see that you can get a maximum of 10% deducted if your referencing is not correct, okay? So if you got 90% for your assignment and your referencing was very poorly done, you're going to get 90 minus 10 percent which is 80 percent if you got 50 percent and you passed but your referencing was really bad you're going to get 40 percent and fail okay so this is going to apply now very importantly here you can still not plagiarize your assignment and get 10 percent subtracted the 10 percent gets subtracted only if you have correctly referenced, but there's a problem with your referencing. Then we take out five or 10%.
if you have not realized assignment okay so we don't subtract marks if you have plagiarized or if you have not referenced correctly uh, at all we give you zero for that assessment okay it yeah please note however that evidence of plagiarism in the form of coffee copied or unsighted work not referenced absent reference lists or exceptionally poor referencing may result in action being taken in accordance with the IIE's intellectual integrity policy. It's to our advantage to know the rules of the game, to know the rules of the college. So where do we find all of these rules? We will find it in the intranet. So if I go back into my browser, and if I'm looking for Rosebank College, the intranet, Whatever documents and policies, etc., I will be able to find here. So I can see there I've got uh, the student repository. Repository is like a collection of documents, etc. So the student material, IIE library, the IIE. There's IIE policies. So if I look on IIE policies, I will then be able to see what are the rules and regulations regarding intellectual property or any other um, topics which are of concern to me. So I can see here there's a quality assurance uh, uh, program, there's research and postgraduate, there's work integrated learning, there's assessment, student records, etc. Basically on everything that the college does, teaching and learning strategy, there's going to be an associated policy that tells us what are the rules and regulations that have been formulated over all of this time based on the college uh, compliance to the laws of the country and of good education practice. Also, if the college is accredited with different um, higher education institutes, right, or other education governing bodies, then we need to follow certain rules. So our policies needs to be in line with those rules. Going back to my assignment now. So we showed you where to get it from, and we are currently on assignment one. Also ensure that you're working with the correct version. It says on the top right-hand side that this is 2024 version of the assignment. Question one, unit one, taking a computer apart and putting it back together. This should be straightforward to us. If I've got a systems unit, I need to know how to open up the box, how to remove all of the components from inside of the box, and then how to put the components back together into the box. When I open up a computer box, which is a systems unit or a computer case, what do I expect to find inside of that systems unit? I expect to uh, find a motherboard, a power supply, a central processing unit or a CPU, a hard disk drive or a solid state drive, and RAM. Those are the basic components that I expect to find inside of the systems unit. So question 1.1 says, as an ICT hardware technician for a college, Click on it and then select that mistake, or I can press the F7 key on my keyboard. Spelling mistakes is not acceptable. We need to run spell check, right? Where the technology is there to prevent us from making certain errors, we need to use the technology for that purpose. The college would like to upgrade the hardware to replace its much older hardware. Remember, we said this module is all about the computer's hardware. The new hardware should be installed with the latest software. The latest software has minimum hardware requirements. So you can't run the latest up to standard. The new hardware should be installed with the latest software due to certain issue. Due to a certain issue, the college cannot afford to replace the entire hardware components or buy new computers. 
the college will keep some of the existing hardware and upgrade some of the components. You are tasked to write a report on how you would achieve the following. So what is question 1.1? Writing a report. Question 1.1 is writing a report on what? On three topics. Each of the topics is worth five marks. So the first topic says, write a report on how to achieve the following safety procedures. For anything that I'm doing, I need to then write safety procedures. I need to define safety procedures. Safety procedures is the precautions to take when working with computer components so that I do not cause harm to the computer components or harm to myself when working with computing components. Okay. Then safety procedures includes working with an ESD wrist strap. ESD is electrostatic discharge. It ensures that if I'm carrying any static electricity, that static electricity is going to be discharged in a way that does not damage components. What other safety procedures are there? Where would I find this information? It says I would find this information in learning unit one. So you have a soft copy of the textbook and you've also got slides. We would skim through the slides, we would read through the textbook, and we would be familiar with the information that is available in the textbook. So I will go and look for unit one, safety procedures, tools to use. Tools to use are the tools that I'm going to be using when assembling or disassembling a computer. These tools include a Phillips screwdriver, Torx screwdriver, flat screwdriver, a multimeter, etc. And you list all of these tools that's going to be used and you write sufficient information for the five marks. Environmental concerns when you are working. Is it hot? Is it cold? Is the atmosphere dry? Is it moist? What are the environmental concerns? Is there interference coming from different sources? Okay, so interference from radio frequencies, from electromagnetic interference. Um, what are the things that's present in the environment that could be causing problems? So that's for 15 marks. Question 1.2 says, based on question 1.1, research five latest, latest means current in the market hardware components that will be used to upgrade your computer system and their best features remember earlier on they told us i'll get to your question just now earlier on they told us we don't have money to replace all the computers what we're going to do is we're going to look at the computers that we have and we're going to determine what can we upgrade in these computers can i upgrade the cpu can i upgrade the ram can I upgrade the hard drive? Can I upgrade the motherboard? Is it necessary? Right? Yes, your question? Okay. So the question is, they are asking about the latest components, but then there is a uh, what seems to be a contradiction that they say don't take from other sources of information, right? So when we are talking about latest here, latest in context of your textbook, your textbook is produced in 2022, which is latest, right? We don't necessarily need to now in 20 in technology, things have changed in the last two years from 2022 to 2024. There's changes in technology. Now, it's not that dramatic. For example, if I'm going to take a CPU and I choose a 
Intel Core i7 CPU. Your textbook might mention the 12th generation, but in the industry, you've got the 13th generation, right? So if you use the 12th generation as per your textbook, or you use the 13th generation as per the Intel website or some other latest source of information, both are correct, right? So both are correct. Yes, if you are using external sources, you need to mention, I got this from the Intel website, and there's the link to the Intel website. So you'll need to reference your sources correctly. Based on the scenario above, five latest hardware components that will be used to upgrade this computer system and their best features. The new computer system should be able to run new software applications that will be used by students. Now, they've got five hardware components here. What would I typically upgrade in a systems unit? First thing I would upgrade is the CPU, right? Next thing I would upgrade is the RAM. Next thing I would upgrade is the hard disk drive. I will change it from a uh, hard disk drive to a solid state disk, right? Those are three components so far. The motherboard might need to be upgraded depending on the CPU that I've chosen to use. So the motherboard is the next thing that might need to be upgraded. And the last thing that uh, could be upgraded is, is, is the power supply unit. But let's say, for example, now we've learned, for example, that there's a GPU. Now, GPU is additional cost. If I upgrade the motherboard and I upgrade the CPU, and the CPU already has a GPU in it, and these computers in the college are not being used to play games or to do graphic design, or to do computer-aided design, et cetera, then I don't need to put in a GPU. That's an additional expense that I cannot afford, right? So the components, the five components that you're going to use here are as follows. The CPU, the motherboard, the RAM, or uh, the memory, right? So that's RAM, the DDR4, uh, RAM. The power supply, hard disk drive, right? So we said CPU, motherboard, RAM, power supply, hard disk drive. These are all of the components that we can upgrade or that's commonly going to be upgraded. So they say here, I need to list the hardware components and then tell me what is the best features of those hardware components. And that's for 25 marks. So listing the hardware component to say CPU, I get one mark. To describe the best features of the CPU, I'm going to get four marks. So I need to make four points. The best features of the CPU could be it's got multiple cores. It can do multi-processing, right? It's got better power management. It's going to consume less power. Other things about the CPU, it can process, uh, it, it, it has virtualization support. Virtualization support is necessary for what? To running virtual computers, right? Maybe there's a feature in the CPU that allows for AI or artificial intelligence. So you look at what are features of CPUs, multitasking, multiprocessing, uh, multiple cores, virtualization support, et cetera. And then you say, these are the best features and you list four of them. Next question, taking a computer apart and putting it back together. Again, it's on uh, unit one, question two, and this is for 20 marks. Computer hardware is a collection of physical elements that constitutes a computer system. 
Computer hardware are the physical parts of the computer components, which are devices such as monitors, keyboards, mouse, printers, plotters, scanners, and the systems unit. As a junior ICT support staff, you've been tasked to build a system that will be fully functional to support a group of interns that will help them to also learn how a computer system works. On completion of building of the computer system, explain step by step how you would perform the following. Handle components, correctly assemble components, correctly disassemble components, identifying I.O. ports, briefly describe how a computer system works. Handling of components is covered in Unit 1, Module 1, and they speak about not touching the context, not bending the components, not shaking them in the incorrect way because you can break the components. Assembly and disassembly of the components, there's an order in which you need to assemble and disassemble, whether it's a laptop or a desktop. You need to be aware of that order and uh, follow the guidelines that is given in your textbook. Identifying I.O. ports, what are they talking about? In chapter one, they give you a number of different ports with pictures and their functions. USB port, RJ45 port, RJ11 port, HDMI port, DVI port, um, and there's a number of others that are listed as well. So for this example, you need to identify ports and give their functions and be aware of what are you going to plug into this input-output port. In a USB port, what are you going to plug in? In a DVI port, what am I going to put in? In an RJ45, which component is going to plug into a RJ45 port? How does a computer system work? Input, process, storage, output, right? You'll describe the four processes and give an example. For anything that you are doing, you will always describe and give an example. So then they give us a um, guideline. The guideline here is saying to us, for handling components, you're going to get four marks if you've done a good job of explaining how to handle components. The same applies for the other sections as well. Question three is for 40 marks, and that's the last question in assignment one. So for question three, in case components now, in this activity, you are meant to choose between a desktop computer or a laptop computer as a birthday gift for your family. From your selected birthday gift, identify four components that support your choice and why you chose that particular gift, a desktop or a laptop computer. So in question three, what are you doing? You're buying a new computer. You're buying this new computer as a gift. It's either going to be a laptop or a desktop, one of the two. You need to write a report to show your knowledge in identifying different components of a desktop computer or a laptop. Note that the report should discuss the following for each component. <clears throat> Name an image of the component. Students can use the phones to take pictures. If the image is taken from the internet, it must be referenced. For our purposes, we're going to take pictures from the internet and we're going to reference it. Next week, we should have opportunity to work with some components, but these are all uh, components that are broken. Some of them are old, um, that are not working components, okay? Now, <clears throat> let's look at how to format this information and how to write out an answer. Components, you're going to choose four components. And then you're going to uh, identify why you are choosing a laptop or a desktop computer. Now, first component. Name an image of the component. Brief description of the component, brief description of how the component works, and benefits of the component to the system. So if I choose, for example, the motherboard, 
I will say motherboard is the component, image of the component, and then I will take a picture of the motherboard. Brief description of the component. The motherboard is the um, printed circuit board that contains, that serves as a connection point for all of the other components. It has its own management chip so that it facilitates communication between the different devices or components within the system's unit. It connects to the power supply and it connects the individual components and add-on cards to each other. So then you'll give a brief description of how the component works, a brief description of um, the benefits to the component, uh, to the computing system. Now, remember that it is not acceptable for you to go and type in this question into ChatGPT or any AI tool and then take those answers word for word and put it in your assignment. What you can do is you can type it into ChatGPT. You can look at the answers that ChatGPT gives you, but you still need to paraphrase it and put it into your own words after you have fact-checked fact your answers. In other words, you need to go and check against your textbook, is this information correct, right? Once you have verified that the information is correct against your textbook, or against learn, then only can you paraphrase and put those answers into your assignment. So your assignment needs to be in your own words. It is not a copy and paste from any AI tool. Are there any questions on assignment one? Thank you. 